Welcome to our discussion this morning and we are looking at something very important and this has been a controversial issue all over the years and uh, we trust the Holy Spirit to give us justice and bring us to a clear understanding. As for those who are under the finished work and those who are connected to grace, who are connected to what Jesus has done for them on the cross, there's a need to walk in this grace and walk in the reality of the finished work and not go back to dead works again of religion. Our topic for today is sex before marriage is not a sin. Sex before marriage is not a sin. And if we are looking at this thing in the direction of grace and we are looking at this topic in the direction of what Jesus has done, let us discard whatever anybody has said in the past. Let us discard whatever any preacher has explained or expanded in the past. Let us look at this from the mindset of grace and let us look at this from the mindset of what Jesus has done for us. Sex itself was created by God. And in the beginning of creation, God started with grace before the devil came and sowed the seed of discord between man and God. And then since then, men were sold into the market of religion, into the market of slavery. And as you can see that, God designed that He created sex to be enjoyed. It means that sex itself is a gift from God. It is not a bad thing. It is not a wrong thing. It is a gift from God. But how did we come to this level where people are now saying that you have to ensure that if you want to even have this sex at all, you have to have, have it between the confinement of marriage. This is nothing but this is nothing but heresy this is life this is a religious life that we have been told in this generation this is a religious life that has caged many for years god created us differently people have different odds different odds some people have a strong odds while some people have just a moderate odds some have a low odds god created us created us created us differently in a different way and so for somebody to come and say that it is until you and uh, it is until you are uh, uh, within the confinement of marriage, it is until you are married, that is when you can have faith. It is not only a sin, it is a religious lie and a deception from the devil. Everything God created was good. Everything he did was good until the devil came and sowed the seed of religion into humanity, in the, in, you know, into the heart of humanity, and people started relating by religion. Let us look at this thing from the mindset of grace and not what anybody has said. What God said in the Old Testament. What God said, even some of the things that we saw in the New Testament, is different from what God is saying now because grace is progressive, revelation is progressive, and we have to understand the mindset of God for us presently. As I said earlier, sex itself it is not a sin. And then let us look at the word sin. Sin died on the cross. By the time Jesus Christ died on the cross, he died for sin once and for all. This is, this, is, this is why I said this, this discussion is for those who are under grace. He died for sin once and for all. He nailed sin to the cross and that was, that was all about, about the finished works of Christ. He nailed sin. That means that he said because of this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That is, he destroyed the works of the devil. What was the works of the devil? Sin was the works of the devil. The religion was the works of the devil. He, 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 he eliminated it completely. He destroyed it completely. And this is what we are, we are talking about here. So if sin has been eliminated on the cross, if the power of sin has been destroyed on the cross, then why do we not hear? Why are we still having a mad mindset of sin that has already been destroyed instead of renewing our mind in the understanding of what Jesus has done? If sin has been destroyed, then that means that this sex before marriage that people call sin is no longer a sin because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Sin has died and, and so there is no sin anymore because before God, Jesus has become that Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the whole world. He taketh it away completely so that people can live in a life of liberty and a life of grace. He taketh sin away completely so that people can live in a life of liberty, a life of freedom. A life of grace. So, but today we hear a lot of people 
they are still talking about what Jesus Christ has already finished. They are still emphasizing that people like this, they are nothing but religious hypocrites. Who will not admit that they are not perfect? Who will not admit that? Who will not accept the grace of God? They are the enemies of the finished works. Any preacher saying that sex before marriage is, is an enemy of the finished works and is not real. Because what God created was good, nothing evil, until the devil sold evil. And so, because sin has been destroyed, we have a, we have a, a grace and liberty for people to enjoy those who are only connected to the finished works. Because it is only on the finished works that Jesus Christ destroyed the works of the devil in eliminated sin. And until you are connected to that finished works, you cannot enjoy the liberty. Because if you try to live a life of liberty and grace without connected to the finished works of Christ, then the sting of sin is going to affect you. Because you have not connected to the reality of that finished works, where sin was destroyed and where sin was eliminated once and for all. So having said that, we see that sin has been eliminated, it has been destroyed. So therefore, that, that, that means when we say sex, there's nothing wrong with it. And then we say sin has been eliminated. So this means that sex, whether it is before marriage, whether it is after marriage, whether it is done during marriage, is no longer a sin. But then, this is where wisdom comes in. This is what we must understand. Now, the reason why many people usually say that it should be done in marriage, it is because the act of sex itself is a covenant. That is, whenever you whenever you have sex with someone, then you enter into a covenant. That is a covenant binding you and that person together. It's a covenant itself. And so, because of their religious mentality in those days, they feel that since this is a covenant, definitely you can only have it with somebody that you have been covenanted with. That is, when you are married with someone, that means you are in covenant with that person. And so, they say that that is the only person you have to have it with. But that is it, that was in religion. That was not in the era of grace. They were said that in religion. But now there is grace and sin has been crushed, sin has been destroyed. There is liberty and freedom for people. People don't need to wait until they get married before they can have sex, if they understand the finished works of Christ. But for those in religion, they will continue to wait and wait and wait and say that until they get married, that is when they will not have sex. This is nothing but a religious mentality and God is no longer operating in that dimension anymore. If you are, if you are, if you are just holding yourself saying that you want to, this is when you get married, that is when you have sex, you are just holding yourself for nothing. It has nothing to do with holiness, it has nothing to do with righteousness, it has nothing to do with purity because Jesus already nullified sin on the cross. He already removed it once and for all and that is the truth about grace and about the finished works. Now, as I, as I said earlier, that this thing per se, it is a covenant and so people are afraid that if I should have sex with this person, even if I say I'm under the finished works, if I should have sex with this person, this lady or this man, I'm going to enter into a covenant. And now, if I enter into a covenant, this is this is this is death, this is evil. Something can happen, can happen to me. I don't know what this person is carrying. I don't know the cost that this person is carrying. I don't know the family that this person comes from. I don't know the arrow in the body of this person. If I should do this now, will this not affect me? And then people assume that since that is the case, then let, let, let us call it a sin. That is not to call it a sin. There's wisdom in everything we do. There's need to apply wisdom in all everything that we do. And if wisdom is not applied, you will not work. You will not get it right. Now, this means that if this sex is what you want to have, this you know you want to engage in this sexual interaction with someone that you know that you are not married to. Maybe you you you, you guys are just having a dating, or maybe you, maybe you guys are, you are dating, or maybe you guys are just having a relationship, and, and then somehow somehow you feel like going to that area. The point is that whenever that act, sex, a sexual act is committed, that covenant that 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 was formed between you and that person must be nullified after the act is done so that you will not share what you feel that that person is carrying or what you feel that person is, is also carrying, the other one is carrying you can nullify and break that covenant with the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus was, was shed for you so that you can live a life of freedom so that you can dominate over the works of darkness the devil was the one that 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 poisoned sex. He was the one that poisoned it and 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 and, and made that law so that people can only have sex with the people that they are married to. Even the people that they are that are having sex with those who they are married to, they are still getting into problem. How much more? 
So the main the main issue here is not about it's not about if I'm married to the person or if I'm not married to the person. The main issue is that are you connected to the finished works of Christ? Are you under grace? Have you seen what Jesus did for you on the cross? Have you seen the reality of his finished works for you on the cross? Have you have you have you have you accepted it into your life? So the point is nullify that confidence immediately after the act is done with the blood of Jesus and you will do it to a point of where you will feel something has put a comb, truly been destroyed you will do it to a point where you will feel like truly something has been destroyed you will fight that covenant instantly and then another form of wisdom is that sometimes just like you see that whenever anybody wants to have sex they remove their clothes they remove their clothes they remove their body their everything they are putting on and then to have that form and after that they put it on sometimes that kind of thing also happens in the spirit realm. that is everything some of the things that you have with you maybe some of the things that god has given you your treasures your inheritance maybe like some gifts that you have and some of the things that god has given to you that you are supposed to you're supposed to you're supposed to that, that you have with you after the act is done also immediately you break the attempt that covenant then you cannot pray that anything that you dropped, any of your inheritance that was given to you, maybe during the act of sex, as you are removing your clothes, you put it aside. You say you take it back by the power in the blood of Jesus. You take back that inheritance, that your possession, anything, any of your gifts, any of your possession that you dropped. Since you are true with the act now, take it back instantly with, with faith, with the prayer of faith that I take back my inheritance and I take back my possession by the power in the blood of Jesus. You do, also, you do that also to a point where you realize that you have taken something back, if truly. And then as you do that, you are free. This is a work of grace. Nothing is seen in the eyes of God any longer since the day Jesus removed it again. The devil is just cheating people to, be, to believe in what is not true again. And once you believe in it, you will mean yourself. The devil is just trying to use that opportunity to cage you and put you in ignorance of what you know nothing about. Now, some people used to quote this place. And you know, if you go to Hebrews chapter 3, from verse uh, 4, they used to call that place and say, uh-huh, What are you saying? He said, Marriage is honorable in hell and the bed on the fire, but one among us and a doctor has got with joy. Now they call this scripture out of context. The first thing about this scripture is that this scripture was written to the Hebrew, to the Hebrews. It was not written to you. It was written to the Hebrews in those days. It was not even written to you. So it is even wrong to personalize the scripture. One, then number two is that it was written in those days, years back, the grace that was operating at that time. It's not the same grace that, that is operating now. And so, if you are operating with the grace that is, that is operating now, you need to go by what God is saying now, not what God said then. So, people are still following what God said then, that they, they will read this place, marriage is honorable in her, and they bear on the fight. But one among us and another God will judge. Now, this, this prophecy is, is a religious statement. Now, for you to be mentioning one among us and another, that is going by religion. Where there is, there, is a, there, is a, there is a remembrance of sin. But under grace, Jesus said, God said, I will remember their sin no more. In the book of Hebrew, that same Hebrew, if you read that book of Hebrew also, he said that this is a covenant that will make with them in those days. But today, people are no longer following that place again. They feel that it is not true. Look at that place. He said, Jesus Christ is a, is a high priest. He said, He has what? He has obtained eternal redemption for us. So what are we saying? What we are saying in essence is that some scripture that people read and then they try to quote it today is no longer relevant for this generation. It was relevant in those generations according to the grace that was there, but no longer relevant because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. So this scripture is no longer relevant. You can't be quoting this. Really align yourself with what Jesus has done for you on the cross and believe that sin has been destroyed. One of the benefits of the finished works is that he said that we will take up serpent and then it will not work, it will not hurt us. The devil from the beginning has already has promoted so many things that people do, even the food people eat, even the things that people that people wear. He has polluted it, he even polluted sex, he polluted the woman so that if you if you if you try to have sex with them and you're not under the finished works, you just carry a load that is not yours. But if you're under grace and you have connected with the power in the finished works, look at the one of the power in the finished works that Jesus promised those who are under the finished works that if they will believe in these finished works and they will accept it, this is the kind of thing that will follow them. Look at what he said, Mark chapter 16. Look at verse 18. He said, They shall take up serpent. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That is, if they take up serpent, it will not hurt them. If they drink any, any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. Meaning that this serpent means that anything that is deadly, anything that has harm, that has the ability to harm you, anything that has the potential to affect you, anything that has the potential to harm you spiritually. He said, 
if you are connected to the finished works of Christ and you are, you are connected to the power in the finished works, it will not harm you. This is the benefit of living a life under grace and the finished works of Christ. The power and the grace is there to always disarm anything that can harm you. If you want to engage in any sexual intercourse and maybe even the sexual intercourse can harm you, because of your connection to the finished works, it will disarm it. But then you must maintain this, this truth that I'm telling you today that whenever that act is done, the confidence must be broken with the blood of Jesus because it is the blood of Jesus that was, that was obtained for you and I so that we can live a life of freedom. And then maybe there's any form of inheritance or possession of John that was dropped, you pray and you know what, and you take back that possession. Sex before marriage is not, is not a sin. Sin has been crushed on the cross. Sin has been defeated once and for all on the cross. And Jesus has taken all the glory and honor. He has he said, when he rose up, he said, He said, All power and authority has been given to me. We are not living in that realm of you who understand any longer. Jesus has fulfilled the works the of the law. Those who go by the law are the ones that are listening. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not do that's the law. Jesus fulfilled that for us already. Because we are not perfect, we can't fulfill the law. Jesus came on our behalf to fulfill everything so that we can live a life of grace and freedom. People will now come to you and say, Shall we continue in sin? And they say, Let's get say uh, and expect grace to abound. He is not even talking to you in the first place because it was written to the book of Rome, to the Roman scripture, first of all. Secondly, you quoted that place out of context. He was explaining something. If you want to understand the book of Romans, read the whole book of Romans because it's a whole letter. You need to understand the whole letter before you can now say that this is what he's saying. But if you just read a portion of the scripture of the whole book of Romans and then interpret it to me, this is what it is saying. You will get the wrong interpretation and you will lead other people to error and bondage. So Jesus has already modified the works of darkness. He has removed everything that can harm you. This is why you need to connect to the finish of life, to live a life of freedom. Of course, we know that sex before marriage is not a sin. And does it mean, this does not mean that everything should not be done with wisdom. This does not mean that you should, you should go, and be, go and be forcing people to, you know, to try to say they want to sleep with them by phone. It has to be mutual agreement. If the other party is not agreeing with you, you can't do it. If the other party is saying no, you can't do it. You can't force and you cannot also try to say that you want to, you want to take it by force even when the person is not giving you. It has to be willing. It has to be done in wisdom. It has to be done in wisdom. This also say you should be like that, that other man that went to sleep with his father's wife. Even though the act that he did was not, it is not something that you know that that was that is not a sin, but it was not done in wisdom. There were other there were other ways he could satisfy that urge instead of going to sleep with his father's wife. He could he could do it somewhere outside, somewhere, somewhere, and then with someone that has no relation, you know, with him or her, and that people will now begin to misinterpret what you are doing. It is known that, that what he did was a sin, but he did not apply wisdom. The fact that you are under grace and the fact that you are under the finished source of Christ doesn't mean that you should not apply wisdom in all that you do. Wisdom is necessary. Wisdom is important. It is important to do everything that you do in wisdom. And so, so that the grace of God can continue to increase in your life. But you must maintain the stand that sex before marriage is not a sin. Whether you do it before marriage, whether you do it after marriage, it is not. Jesus has given us grace. Because he knows that no one is perfect. That is why he came on our behalf to fulfill everything that God asked in the Old Testament on our behalf. He fulfilled it once and for all and gave us liberty to live a life of grace, even with wisdom, because no one is perfect. If you if you feel that you are not the one that is you are not the one that likes sex over there, some other people may like it. Some other people may be weak where you are strong, where you may be strong where others are weak. You don't need to join anybody. Jesus died for us all because no one is perfect. And then you must understand that He has defeated sin on the cross. He has crushed it and He has nullified it once and for all and He declared that it is finished. So, this is the truth of the matter. Remember, sin has been crushed and destroyed. Remember what you must do. And remember the reason why people, I told you the reason why people call it a sin, the covenant. Remember why? Remember that the covenant must be destroyed and everything must be eliminated even after it is done. Then your conscience is clean and clear because. First of all, you did not force, you did not take it by force. You do it in a way of wisdom, and because the grace of God is with you, is speaking for you. You are not serving God by works, so that you will not be feeling guilty. As if it is as if God is counting your works or counting what you are doing to you. Remember, Jesus Christ has taken your place. He has what? He has fulfilled the law on the behalf, and He has brought grace. He has given you a righteousness which is by faith, not by works. He has given you righteousness. He is all righteousness. 
He took away your sin so that he can give you righteousness, which is by faith. You did not do anything to obtain his righteousness. You did not do anything to obtain his freedom and grace. Therefore, there is nothing that you can do that will take away that righteousness away from you if you don't go back to meet Satan and don't go back to the works of darkness. But if you stay in the finished works, if you stay in the righteousness that Jesus has given you and you walk in the reality of the finished works of Christ, his grace will be sufficient for you, Olivia. I believe you have been blessed by what we have discussed today. If you have any questions, you can send to us. But for now, let us pray and call it a day. Lord, we thank you for helping us to understand that your grace has settled it for us. Thank you for helping us to understand that it is finished. Thank you because you have helped us to understand that the worship of darkness has been destroyed and that people should remain in the freedom and grace that Jesus has given to them. Lord, I pray that all those who have listened to what today, I pray that they will understand this and they will work in the reality of the finish of your life. The wisdom of God will teach them what to do and how to apply what they have listened to in this day. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you for watching us today. I believe you have been blessed. If you have any questions, send us on an email on the screen. Call us on our phone number, chat us on WhatsApp, and you can talk to us more and more. God will continue to increase your wisdom and increase your knowledge in the name of Jesus. God bless you. The same time, same station on each TV. Remember to subscribe. We'll meet again on another edition of this of this program. God bless you.